post covid world so i would say that there are there are and there always have been tremendous opportunities for the youth anywhere in the world at and at all times especially at the times of adversities so adversities and crises gives rise to innovation the old saying the necessity is the mother of all inventions we have all heard of so i just like to give you some examples of companies that emerged during a recession general electric founded in 1892 ibm founded in 1911 disney 1929 hyatt 1957 whatsapp 2007 airbnb 2008 Uber 2009 and now we have all seen that how in the last one year i had not heard of uh, zoom before zoom webex blue jeans video there's so many platforms these online platforms where we are able to do video conferencing etc have become so popular so the trend only shows that how adversities can be converted into opportunities so just to give you an example when uh, uh, in the march when you know when the world discovered that you know this pandemic is there and it's a very serious thing there were lockdowns all over so we at jspl jindal steel and power who uh, where uh, i work as a chairman so you know all over people cut down the production whereas jspl because we were in, you know running a operating a very tight ship we could not afford to slow down so and there was lockdown in india even if we produced steel they would be sell it so we looked at exports and for april may june for 3 months we were exporting 80% of our production to all over the world wherever there was demand even at low prices and as a result during that quarter we perform we outperformed all our peers in most of the world and i'm happy to share that uh, during these terms of crisis our uh, share prices performance of the company our share price rose from 63 rupees from the in the first week of april 2020 to 370 rupees in the first week of april of uh, 2021 a uh, increase of over 500% uh, percent. so it is the same crisis but it's just how you deal with the crisis that is what uh, matters most so for the youth uh, you know there is i would just like to say that for the youth there are tremendous opportunities today so we don't have to wait for some opportune moment i would say this is the opportune moment for every youth in challenging times like these innovation original thinking and enterprising ways will win the day it is therefore the right time to create a new future i was just uh, you know just uh, seeing a video recently that how some youth i believe they are in israel they are trying to produce milk from microbes in the lab and you know we have all heard of how cultured meat is being produced uh, by in vitro cell culture many places in the world so this is really like i would say this is uh, this is going to change the way what we eat and the way we operate a recent uh, credit suisse report says that there are as many as 100 unicorns in india when percent of the top 500 listed companies were established in the 20th century so today the youth is living in a very exciting times i think uh, we are all living in a very exciting times today so we have to dream big and we sh- we must have the confidence that we can we can make it big so if you talk about globally we are witnessing the advent of a post covid era where china and the us will define the two poles globally we have seen that indian youth has to compete with the very best from the us as well as from the chi- from china here india must build on its inherent competitive advantages over these countries while countries like the us do have a superior it infrastructure and computer science it graduates 
Indians too are known to do extremely well in this. Our national education policy 2020 in a welcome thrust has introduced coding in school curriculum. This I believe will strengthen the Indian IT talent even further. Indian IT talent must be the very best in the world. Especially in the post COVID world, services led growth will only become much more important. The youth must work towards this. The government and the private sector must help build the necessary conditions for this to succeed. I mean, we all know that uh, four of the world's 10 biggest tech companies have Indian origin CEOs. It's something which is, uh, uh, which is a matter of great pride for us and all the youth. Uh, we can draw inspiration from, from such CEOs. And brands like uh, SRCC and the IITs are extremely important for India's future. Of the 72 Indian origin engineers who have uh, founded unicorns across the world, 50% were IIT alumni. And similarly, SRCC alumni are making waves across the world. Uh, being the chancellor of uh, OP Jindal Global University, you know, we have seen that how the youth, how they are able to demonstrate, how they're able to succeed and how they're, how they're so innovative, how they're so smart and they are able to take on any challenge. So for the sake of India, sake of India's future, especially in the post COVID world, we need many more such centers of excellence. Friends, I would say that post COVID era has created massive opportunities in some sectors where Indians have made a big mark. And I will name two such sectors, EdTech and e-commerce. In the world of EdTech, players like Bejus, Unacademy, et cetera, et cetera, there are, there are many, many names, have made a global mark. And they are led by young visionary Indians. It is for today's youth to tap the right opportunities and make it big. Gone have those days where there used to be limitations. Today, I would say there is, there are no limitations. You know, now everything is available online and we have a young population and the advantage of young population is the older people, they still find sometimes difficult to deal with technology. But today's youth and special Indians, you know, you, all of you are very, very uh, tech savvy and you can use the technology completely to your advantage. I'm happy that even the National Education Policy 2020 is giving a lot of thrust to vocational training and education in our schools. And a skilled workforce is really, really important for any country. And we are only able to take the advantage of our young population, the demographic dividend, only if our, if our, if our youth are well-trained and they are well-educated. So I would say this, due to this pandemic, you know, we have obviously there are a lot of people have really suffered. There's so many businesses that have suffered. It has also thrown a lot of, lot of opportunities. Earlier, what we felt was not possible. Today, it's possible. I would just like to give you examples that in our company, in our steel plants, steel plants in Chhattisgarh, in Odisha, in Jharkhand, you know, where all the time we used to have foreign experts coming and, uh, you know, training our people or doing something. And whereas now all that is happening online. So we could not imagine that. Uh, and all the time people used to have physical meetings. And now the amount of virtual meetings we are having is absolutely astounding. You know, earlier one had to travel for a, for a meeting to meet a banker in, uh, in Mumbai when I had to spend the whole day just for that 15, 20 minute meeting. And now you can do 10 such meetings seamlessly. You're sitting in the comfort of your home or your office. So for this, obviously internet connectivity is very, very crucial. And we really need to improve our internet, internet connectivity in the rural areas also. 
because rural areas uh, they need to improve the internet connectivity but i'm happy that the indian government's vision is that the entire rural india is to be connected with high speed internet in the next 1000 days and i i think that will make a huge difference so uh, i would just say that all this creates new opportunities for indian youth to make a mark in education in it broadband connectivity and india's growth in this world so today you can do whatever you want to do whatever courses you want to do wherever you want to learn everything is available on the internet you know i was just thinking of uh, the example of eklavya you know how eklavya had to learn from uh, dronacharya who refused to teach him and he used to you know standing behind some trees you know and looking uh, he he learned but today whatever we want to learn it's all available all available on the net we can do any online courses we can teach online and webinars meeting consultancy so even workouts if somebody wants to work if somebody wants to work out one could have a trainer who's training them uh, online if you want to train somebody you can uh, train somebody uh, online you can give uh, you know virtual lessons online so one has to leverage technology and uh, so uh, i just feel and technology is something that we are really really good at and uh, so i feel uh, all, all of you all of you young people i would say are very very smart especially the smartest ones go to srcc and uh, so i just like to congratulate you for being in srcc for organizing and i was list i uh, seeing your list of uh, speakers you have very very impressive uh, speakers who were coming and uh, talking to you and uh, with this i like to take any questions uh, uh, that you have so that it's more uh, interactive hello sir can you hear me yeah. sir hi please carry on Uh, so we have a question from somebody in the audience there are, uh, it's tane bansal he's asking what steps can a young college student take to aspire to build an empire like the jindal group <laughs> so what okay, is the well, behind building wealth in this country so see obviously one has to see uh, what opportunities are there so the industry that uh, we are in uh, say uh, uh, steel production it does happen to be a very very uh, capital intensive industry and it does take a long time also but then you know there's so many indian youth say like example of oyo or there's so many other examples where people have come up with the you know great ideas and then they have changed the world you know so many startups are there so many new things are happening so one has to look at i feel uh, one has to look at uh, newer technologies you know new things and you know there's so many things happening there's so many services that people need how can we provide those services i think that is the that's the main concern that is the main opportunity how can we um, how can we create the services which people need and i think that's how we can do it right sir. so the next question would be uh, so as students we're just beginning our careers and with srcc we do have some sort of leverage what would your greatest piece of advice be for somebody in the 20s what is the greatest skill they can learn at this point in time i think most important is to you know keep one's uh, eyes ears open not waste time and uh, and see what's what's happening around us and constantly uh, you know one could be wasting time on the net surfing the net or one could be learning so i think uh, these years are of learning and if you spend your time wisely reading uh, inspiring books you know reading and utilizing your times learning some new things i think that's what would uh, help you give you ideas and thinking obviously thinking and implementing those ideas working on them so working on implementation i think helps just um, just talking about them we have to take concrete steps for whatever ideas that you have if you take concrete steps i think that's what helps rather than just think about them and actually not doing anything about it right sir so anything from college you would like to share probably an instant which you just cannot forget from the college days would love to know I, because um, i told you that i i tried to uh, get into srcc 
but uh, they would not let me because I had only that time uh, 63%. And I think the cutoff must have been like, uh, I don't know, at those times, 1987, the cutoff used to be in SRC maybe, I don't know, 85, I don't know, 85%. Okay. So, uh, but, um, you know, and uh, my shooting, I was the, but certain colleges that gave, uh, gave a lot of importance to sports also. So they, they valued my, my shooting results, my, because I was to be Delhi state champion in shooting. So that's how I got into Hans Raj. But, uh, you know, so you could teach me a lot because kids from SRCC, they're very, very smart. So we, we learn from people like you and that's what you always try to be like. Thank you, Ronak. Thank you so much for your time, sir. It's, it's an honor to have you here. It's truly admirable for you to be here. Thank you so much and wish you all uh, the very, very best. And uh, so I'd like to congratulate you for organizing this uh, conclave. You did not uh, let, you know, earlier times I've been invited, but I could not make it because it did not used to be online, right? So this is probably the first time you are having it online. So I had to travel today I had to travel from Delhi to Chhattisgarh. I'm in Raigarh right now. And because it was online, so it was absolutely no issue. So this is what uh, technology can do. That, you know, like now all these speakers that you have today, if this was not online, you know, I would say it would be difficult to get even half of these uh, speakers to come to the campus to speak. But obviously you can't replace, you know, actually meeting in person is absolutely great. Uh, it cannot be replaced by just these uh, virtual uh, uh, conclaves and meetings. But still, under the circumstances, I think this is the best option. So I wish you all the very, very best. Keep safe. Take precautions. So I have a son and daughter. My daughter is in uh, Yale and son just passed out of Yale and now going to go to Harvard Business School. So I know that, uh, you know, that, that uh, young people don't like to take too many precautions. They feel nothing can happen to them. But uh, being a young father, I would just like to say that please do take uh, precautions. Do wear your mask, etc. When you are, you know, when you are partying or when you are roaming around, and take care of yourselves. Okay, you have a very, very bright future, and wish you all the very, very best. Thank you once again, sir. Okay. It's truly an honor to Thank have you at SRCC Business Conclave. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye bye.